Now, it wouldn't be Christmas here on NVTV without my next guest. It is the one and only, the legendary Terry Hooley. How are you, sir? I'm very well, Robin, for a change. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Ah, so well, I'm glad to be here because it wouldn't be Christmas without being on the, on the show. Christmas officially starts and you walk yeah, in the door. That does. I haven't even got my Christmas hat with me today. Have you? Yes. When, when I've been on the show and then I watch Love Actually on TV, I know it's Christmas. That's when I get into the Christmas mood. So is that what you're like really at home? You and Claire sit and watch rom-coms and things together? No, I usually watch them on my own. Really? She doesn't like to see a grown man cry at the end. <laughs> so, it, uh... so what's Christmas got in store for you this year then? Well, Christmas, uh, oh, actually, I've got a special present this year. Have you? Yes. I'm going to collect it tomorrow. We lost our, our, our little Steffi. Uh, Claire's mad about Steffi's. Ours was a street fighting dog, which was found in Antrim. The owners didn't want it. After a week, we didn't want it, but we persevered. And uh, it didn't do any tricks. It just attacked big dogs. And, <laughs> and uh, you couldn't let it out on its own. And. Uh, well, we only had a train to attack Van Morrison, that was it. <laughs> um, so we had to get the dog put down, we didn't want to be suffering. And then Claire had been talking to people and, and was interested in getting a new staffy. And then the other week we got a phone call to say that there had been a staffy, had been found, had been in the pound for five days, nobody owned it, and its eye was damaged and it's lost its eye. Just like you. Just like me. There you I go. Mean, perfect. <laughs> so this is my big Christmas present, that we went down to see the dog, and we took her out, and we're going to call her Amber. Oh. And because she's a brown dog and stuff, and we're collecting her tomorrow. Lovely. Terry, I was in your kitchen recently. Really? And uh, yes, I was. You're yes. Stealing our silver. <laughs> and your kitchen has now become a radio studio. It has indeed. Yes. And I wonder why that is, Robin. Because you're on that fabulous new station, Belfast Twenty Four Seven. You asked me, and I, I don't know for why. I can't turn you down. <laughs> and you. But you, yes. you sound like you're enjoying yourself. Uh, yes, it is. And, and Claire does the engineering, and the couple that do the radio show together stays together. There you go, yes. So there'll be three of us at, uh, with a dog, Amber. Yeah. But the radio sh show's been really good for me because it's made my, my brain start to work again. Because I've been staying at home an awful lot through COVID and stuff. And, I, and I'm, I'm actually thinking like writing a book about some of the records that I, I'm playing on the show. That uh, I'm going back I'm not playing modern stuff. I'm going back to stuff that I actually love, no matter how bad the record is. You, you went off on a gospel thing the other night when I tuned Oh, I in. love the gospel. Yeah. I mean, the last rock and roll book that I, I read was Mahalia Jackson's life story. Right. And that was because of my good Methodist upbringing, because I was at church every Sunday morning, church Sunday school. Mother was a Sunday school teacher at church at night. And uh, in my youth, I wanted to be a missionary and go to Red China and save all the heathens. Wow, okay. So, uh, and I used to read books about missionaries. And every Sunday, Saturday night, we were taken to the Grosvenor Hall and we watched religious films and stuff like that. So I'm, I was brought up in, by my, in my mother's family, very Christian. And uh, my mother used to go into town to her shop and she used to go to St. Mary's chapels to pray because all the Protestant churches were closed. Of course, yes. And then I had my father, who was a socialist and Labour candidate and used to get beat up, standing for election in East Belfast. And so I had the, the socialist side and, and the Christianity, and I like to think somewhere in the middle, i become an anarchist. So when it comes <laughs> to the radio show, you never know what you're going to get really no, from you your don't. show, do you? No, you don't. I play French music, I play country music, I play soul music play a bit of punk. I mean, I mean, a lot of people expect me to, as the grandfather of punk in Belfast, to be playing a lot of punk, and I, I try not to. Yeah. And I don't play a lot of good vibrations records, but I play ones that I think that are interesting, you know. Uh, Lots of 60s girl groups. Oh, I love my 60s yes. girl groups. 
I mean, if you're in our kitchen, you would have seen that I eventually got my poster uh, autographed by the Shangri Las. Yes, yes. In fact, Ronnie Spector has been played quite a lot on the show. Yes. When I was the loneliest kid in the bedroom. Uh, <laughs> you know, these are the records that I, I play it. And then I tell stories like, uh, you know, like, that I once kissed Silla Black. <laughs> did you? I was, I was, did you not hear that bit? I've never, did, when did you kiss Silla Black? Because I was I, always <laughs> very jealous of people who got to know Silla and got to meet her, because I always wanted to meet her, never oh, did. Well, I, I met her in Belfast when she was playing the Whitler Hall. Right. And I had been a big Silla Black fan from her first record, not, not anyone who had a heart, but the Love loved of the of Loved. loved. Which I thought was the first punk record I'd ever heard, and then I heard it recently, and it was like, so tame. It was on, but I thought it just spat out the words, and uh, I I I love Scylla, although I do prefer Dion Warwick's anyone who had a heart. <gasps> so I did, and uh, I I got a chance to meet Scylla, and we kissed, and she said, "Isn't he tall?" Because I was tall for me age then, and <laughs> <laughs> but that isn't the story. The story is I was in the BBC one day and I was doing an interview, yeah, and I was talking about punk records and stuff, and and then. The interviewer said, is it true you once kissed Silla Black? And I went, yes, I did. And, uh, and, and I'm not ashamed of it. And I said, at that time, I, I was a big Silla Black fan. And Elvis Presley had Silla on his jukebox. So there yes, she was number 15 with You're My World. <laughs> but people like the wee stories that I tell, like I, I, I was, when I was 15, I was going out with this girl who lived in a big house of the Belmont Road and they were very rich and we were not so rich. I mean, we had a party the day that we could afford Lino for our, our bathroom, you know, it was a big, big deal in our house. We had tea and buns, you know. And she said to me, uh, well, they, that, uh, they've got an auto man. And I was thinking, they've got a robot. And I said, does it do dishes? And does it do a vacuum cleaning? She says, no, you keep linen, linen it. I had never heard what, what a, a nano man was. <laughs> you can see that that relationship didn't oh, go any further than that. <laughs> brilliant. So, but people like me telling the wee stories. I love the stories as well. And um, we mentioned uh, the late, great Nancy Griffith recently. You yes, knew Nancy. And of I course, knew Nancy well. We sadly lost her earlier this year, didn't we? Hi. Nancy was lovely, so she was. And <laughs> but I'll not be playing her at... The good vibrations come by night. Hoolies Hooli. When's Hoolies Hooli then? New Year's, New Year's Eve. Eve, yes. Okay, we've got it back again. So for those three people that wanted it, we're back by public demand. <laughs> and we've got Charlotte Dryden, who runs the OES Centre. Stuart Bailey, who we have, we have toured all over the world doing DJ together. And we've got Stevie Boy Nickel, who I've done a lot of DJing with down in Bangor. This is where I started doing DJ when I was 16, because I couldn't get a gig in Belfast. And what was the venue? Where did you start off? I started off in the Duck Pond <laughs> in Bangor, which was the Scout Hall in Ward Park. Right. It was these girls that uh, were very fond of me, who were a bit older than me and led me astray, got me all these gigs. And uh, where we were living, I know there's a church hall there where I did DJ, but I think they must have knocked it down. I haven't been able to find it. <laughs> OK. So there you go. So all these years later, still going strong and back on New Year's Eve. Not as mad and as crazy as ever. Exactly. New Year's yeah. Eve in the OES yeah Centre? Yeah. Right. Christmas is here. You can put your Christmas hat on now. You have that down there somewhere. Have you? Or Claire has it standing by. Here she comes. Bring it into yeah. the shot here. <laughs> Why not? Because I know you brought it especially for the show. So there we go. A festive... Oh, dear, dear, dear. A festive Terry well, my, mate, my mate Kenny gave me this when I was <laughs> in hospital one Christmas. He wrapped up a bottle of brandy. <laughs> right, I'm going to let you introduce the minnows, OK? Look into that camera over there and say, here's the minnows with Cheer Up Christmas. Greetings. Now we're going to have something special on the show. We are going to have the minnows with their fabulous new track, Cheer Up Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> 